Welcome to the first WebGL Camp Europe. I'm very glad we could make it, bring the WebGL Camp Europe to here, to Mutten, Switzerland. I hope you all found the way to here with no problem. Um, uh, a special thanks to, to Henrik Bennetson from the WebGL Camp in the USA for making this possible, this event, and uh, allowing us to bring it to Europe. Today we have a very tight agenda. Um, we have a short introduction of me and Professor Stefan Neviko, and then we start with session nine, one, and then go to a quick coffee break, and uh, session two will be before the lunch break, and in the afternoon we have two more sessions. Um, we also have, uh, this is not on the program, we have a little aperitif at the ninth floor of this building at around uh, five o'clock p.m. If you still have time, you're welcome to come to this aperitif. Okay, let's start with a little introduction of Stefan Nebiker about our school. Um. Okay, thanks Martin. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm glad you all came here and that we're such a large number. Uh, we were expecting something like, well, maybe if we're 20 then we're happy, but we're something like 45 people. Some of you might have wondered why uh, come to Basel or Muttens and what does it have to do with this uh, specific school. So uh, I'll spend two or three minutes just uh, introducing the place uh, and the school and maybe give you a bit of background information. Uh, we're one of seven universities of applied sciences in Switzerland. Uh, you see it up on the left hand corner. Uh, well, the border of Switzerland here doesn't show too well, but uh, since you all found your way here, you, you're quite familiar in which corner of the country we're located. Uh, our university has uh, nine schools and nine faculties, and we're actually with uh, architecture, civil engineering, and uh, dramatics engineering. So we're not really in the IT department, but we're quite heavy in IT and software development. Uh, our domain is really uh, geospatial uh, engineering and uh, IT in the geospatial domain. And if you ask yourself, okay, why 3D at this specific school? Uh, I actually went to my image archive and looked for some earlier screenshots of uh, 3D web applications we tried to develop and which we deployed. And uh, we can go back exactly 10 years uh, when we published one of the very first uh, interactive 3D visualizations of an entire country. Uh, it's called Flug durch die Schweiz, or if you translate it, Fly Through Switzerland. And it was uh, then uh, made possible together with Swisstopo, who provided uh, the data. And uh, well, our dream then was how if this would actually be possible without plugins uh, running in every browser. It was already running in a browser, but uh, we ended up spending, I don't know how much resources uh, at university and later in our spin-off company, Geonova, uh, just making it compatible with uh, browser X, browser Y, whatever. And this was really also a bit of a killer. Also 10 years back, uh, another application which unfortunately uh, didn't really make it to the press that much because it really just was ready uh, when the Olympic Games in Salt Lake City, if I look around here, uh, probably many of you don't even remember these Olympic Games <laughs> too well anymore, but uh, this was actually uh, an interactive uh, web portal where you could visit all the, uh, the sport sites and uh, everything was linked with the uh, with the results, uh, websites, and so on. So this was a, a an interesting application. We were really worried about uh, the number of hits we would get. So the the server which was hosting everything was located in Zurich at Switch, which is the uh, the main university web provider in Switzerland, so that we could actually guarantee the uh, the throughput today just place it anywhere on the cloud and uh, we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So this pretty much concludes it. 
uh, also 10 years back, we had the vision of putting it all on mobile devices. Some of these devices, such as the Pogo, never really made it. But uh, uh, And some of these applications are actually already working. This was a 3D service. Uh, this wasn't fake. This was actually working on the iPad, but it was server-side rendering. But it was already giving a nice impression. So thanks for coming here. Thanks for participating, and uh, thanks for making this vision, with, which has been around for quite a while, really a reality that we don't have to worry about plugins too much anymore, and that uh, 3D in the web uh, is just the, not just in the web, but also in the mobile web, uh, is becoming a day-to-day -day, uh, thing. So thanks very much, and enjoy the camp. Thank you, Stefan. I just want to present two slides very quickly. I want to go on to the camp, actually. But I want to tell a few things about WebGL. Where are we now? Where have we to go? You all know uh, WebGL runs pretty good on the desktop and on your laptop today. It's not quite perfect, but it runs. There is still the big question about Internet Explorer. We all know it's very unlikely it will ever come to Internet Explorer, but with, with plugins like Chrome Frame, it's not really a big issue. On the other side, uh, with mobile devices, it looks a bit uh, difficult right now. There are still some, some, uh, some very early devices like the Nokia N900, which uh, supported WebGL from the beginning. And today, there's the BlackBerry Playbook supporting it natively. And there are some uh, Firefox for Android or Opera Mobile for Android supporting WebGL quite good. It's a little bit slow. But on the iOS, we have the situation that there is uh, no communication from the uh, from side of Apple if it will ever be supported. Right now, there are some hacks over the iAd network. And we hope it will it will be possible to have our WebGL applications on the iPad one day. But I, I do think we have to be a little bit patient on this, but I'm, I'm sure it will come. And don't forget, the WebGL specification came out w a bit more than a year ago, and there's still a, a long way to go. And I think we need demos like, like we see today to promote WebGL and to show also the, the whole community, the browser community, how important it is to have good WebGL applications and, and make some cases to, to um, present them. And my personal vision is we have today, we have WebGL, we have HTML5, and maybe WebCL will come soon. So we have on the one side, we have 3D visualization with WebGL, we have compute power on the client with WebCL, and of course we have the power of, of the web with HTML, we have cross-platform, we can deploy, we can collaborate, and so on. And then, of course, don't forget the server. On the server, we have a big advantage with the cloud. We can compute there, we can compute many things, and don't also don't forget the storage on the server. We can have petabytes, if not more, of data server side. Today, you can't install applications on your laptop with 10 petabyte, but this, this will lead to a, a new range of applications. OK, so that's from my side. Again, welcome to the WebGL Camp Europe. And we start the first presentation. It's um, a game, actually. It's Yasmin Kent presenting Trigger Rally.